Hey folks, hope you're having a great time and welcome to another episode of how to build a compiler with uh, LLVM and MLIR. In today's episode, we're going to talk about target code generation. But before we start, as always, updates. In the past two weeks, I was working on the JIT as usual. <laughs> but this time, uh, actually, I'm working on the third approach to creating a JIT. So I tried it twice before. Um, the implementation I end up with, ended up with wasn't like um, what I needed. Like uh, I, I, they didn't meet my uh, requirements. So I had to uh, start another one. I'm going to have an, uh, I'm going to have a video for each of them because it might be useful to someone they work but uh, I, I needed something else. Also, um, actually, in a couple of video, a couple of uh, episodes, we're going to get to the JIT topic. Hopefully, I'll be done by then. Fingers crossed. But who knows? Um, during uh, past two weeks, uh, I was a little bit annoyed with the development process, so I ended up. Uh, writing an Emacs Lisp library to kind of ease my pain. Uh, and let me show you actually. If you uh, navigate, oops. If you navigate to resources directory, there's an Emacs directory and there's a file called serene-dev.el. It's quite simple. It's just a wrapper around the builder script which, uh, with some Emacsifications. Uh, if you're an Emacs user, you might find it useful and I'm pretty sure you know how to load it already. Open up a, a C, C++ file in the uh, project and do super C and C for example to compile it, super C and B to build the entire project. And finally to run it for example either super C or to add the input, uh, like to add some flags and stuff like that, or uh, control C E to run the compiler and as a shortcut to emit something. For example, let me emit some IR. As you can see, it works and it's much easier. Uh, I don't like to type the commands all the time in my terminal. I like shortcuts uh, in my Emacs environment. Anyway, uh, let's uh, get back to the org file. Uh, that was the update. And uh, getting back to the main topic of the day, so far we created a front end, uh, compiler front end based on LLVM that reads a source code, uh, parsed it into an AST. We do some stuff on the ASC to make sure that it's semantically correct and we generate uh, generate some sort of IR based on uh, MLIR and our own dialect called SLIR and then we lower that uh, SLIR into LLVM IR uh, and yep that was the previous uh, episode so by that definition um, our work is kind of done you know, because so a compiler front end is a program that reads the source code and generates some sort of IR. But in the real world, you can't expect your user to uh, be happy getting some sort of an IR from your compiler and run it through uh, Clang or other compilers that understand LLVM IR. That's not the uh, that's not how real world works. Uh, real world works. So um, to be a, a full-fledged compiler, we need to actually uh, create an executable for our program. There's a bunch of ways uh, we can do that, but the common approach is to compile into object files and use a linker to link them together and create an executable. Not every language uh, follows the same uh, approach, uh, but if you use C, C++, or other languages to that nature, they work kind of uh, the same. Um, we're going to stay with the uh, same uh, 
a solution because it's well known. There's tons of documentation around, tons of information on the internet to read about and learn about like uh, how linker works, how uh, like what is an object file um, and uh, vice versa. I included a link to a really, really good um, resource. It's a, like a 20 part uh, essay on linkers. Uh, the person who wrote the gold linker actually uh, wrote these essays and it's fantastic. I highly recommend you to read it. Um, by the end of today's episode, if you're working on a static compiler, on a static language like C, C++, your wiring is done. Your compiler wiring is done. If you remember from our previous episodes, I, I mentioned this almost in every episode. Our, fail, uh, our first milestone and first goal is to get to a point that we have a compiler that practically does nothing, but it has all the different pieces in place. They wired up together and they work, right? So if you are working on a static com uh, compiler, by the end of today's episode, your wiring is done. You have to start like um, making refinements to each piece of the compiler, work on the um, SLIR dialect, your own MLIR dialect, make it better, add features to your language, and uh, that's how it works, right? But modern languages are not usually that simple. In our case, Serene is a Lisp, and a big part of a Lisp is the macro system, or uh, I don't know, Lisp in general is a, like a dynamic nature language. I'm not talking about uh, like how typing works in a language, but if you know about uh, Lisp macros, you know that they run on compile time. So we have to run some code in the compile time as well. That kind of, uh, e that thing, kind of uh, eliminates the purpose of today's episode for us because we don't want to like to generate uh, executable executables basically with uh, as a like a static compiler so that's why I'm working on the JIT but we get to that later in today's uh, episode but before we start the uh, to have a look at the code, we need to know more about what is an object file and like how linking works, basically. I'm pretty sure you know about all this since you're uh, watching a, like a compiler uh, video series, you're interested in compilers, there's a, like a high chance that you know about this kind of stuff. Sorry. Um, but just in case, as a refresher, Let's have a look at uh, what is an object file. So object files are binary files uh, and there's like three different entities uh, in an object file. Symbols, relocations and contents. So when we compile uh, some code into a machine code, so for example, in Serene, if you remember from episode uh, I can't actually remember which, yeah, episode seven. The unit of compilation in Serene is namespace, but in LLVM, it's a module. So when we generate the LLVM IR, LLVM IR for a namespace, it contains a module. And when we compile that module to the machine code, it ends up being on an object file. So in an object file, we have some symbols. Each symbol describes something uh, something global in our uh, module, in our namespace. For example, when we write a function, the function has a name and a body. We actually compile the function into machine code, and then we use the name, we mangle the name, and use it as a symbol to reference to that body, right? To refer to that body. So that's... Uh, Pretty straightforward. Just a heads up, symbols are different than Lisp symbols. So when uh, in the source code, when you uh, 
uh, come across expressions and symbol expressions, they're different. They're on, there's a, like a Lisp concept. This symbol that we are talking about today is a, like a object file and executable and like, uh, I don't know what to call it actually, um, low level concept maybe. Um, each symbol has a name and a value. The value is actually an offset in a content that the machine code lives in. When we have the definition of a symbol, when a symbol has a value, to, we call it a defined symbol. A defined symbol is what we actually define in our source code as well. Same, same example, a function with a definition is a defined symbol. We have the definition. We have the machine code for that, for that symbol. But sometimes we use symbols uh, external to our source code. Either we import them from another object file or module or namespace. They, they're all the same, but in different level, layers. Or like we use a, like a shared library, a static li library, whatever. We don't have the definition. We call those symbols undefined symbols. Another entity in an object file is relocation. Relocations are computations that we perform on the content. They take um, some extra for uh, extra information. We call them uh, addend. Um, relocation, as, as an example, it would be like set this location in this content to this value of this symbol plus this addend. Right. So it's kind of like operations and modifications to contents. Um, when during the link, uh, linking process, the linker actually applies the relocations on the contents and try to resolve the symbols. Resolving a symbol means finding the definition of that symbol. When we uh, like define symbols are obvious, we have the definition. But in case of undefined symbols, if we if the linker can't find the definition, most in most cases, it's going to raise an error. Uh, depends on the relocation type and the symbol type, it might be okay to ignore uh, undefined symbols. But the last concept is contents. So contents are chunk of like a chunk of machine code that we compile when we compile the LLVM IR into some machine code. They, that machine code ends up in a content. So. Basically, when we start an executable file, when we start a process, we load some stuff into memory. And contents uh, are what memory should look like during the execution and during when we start the process, right? So it, it a memory map of a chunk of memory, each con like a, a content. They have size, type, and obviously an array of bytes representing the uh, instruction, machine instructions. Uh, and we have like different section in contents. Um, we have like a text section that contains the generated code, the generated target code. We have the data section uh, that contains the initial initialized the <laughs> initialized value variables <laughs> and read only data uh, or our data contains like a string liter uh, literals. Uh, protocol tables, switch tables, and things to that nature. We talk about protocol tables way in the future. And finally, the B uh, BSS uh, section. There's like more sections, but common one uh, contains like uninitialized variables. I, I, I managed to pronounce it this time. Um, basically, when we uh, on the debug mode, when we compile uh, our application, the BSS is usually there, but when we strip the binary, we actually purge the BSS and assume zero for all the value variables as the value. Um, but the object file itself is just a bunch of uh, entities. The main important thing is the linking process. So basically during the linking process, linker, the job of the linker is to resolve all the symbols 
and then created a, a create a executable binary out of the uh, different object files that we have. So a linker usually read all the object files, read the contents of uh, every object file as their raw data, and then try to figure out like uh, what's the length of each content and uh, the linker will create a, like a table called uh, the symbol table. Try to resolve all the undefined uh, undefined symbols in that table and make sure that we have the definition for all the symbols, or at least we know how to get them. For example, in in case of a shared library, since uh, we don't know uh, about the target machine, not the target machine, actually. actually uh, there's a little bit of confusion there. Uh, since we don't know where this binary is going to run, like on what machine, on what physical machine, what platform, what OS, blah, blah, blah. Uh, usually for shared uh, libraries, uh, the linker will add some code to the executable called uh, dynamic linker that figure out and link the uh, undefined symbols in the runtime only for those symbols that we mark them as external and we dynamically link them against our binary it's not related to our topic of uh, the topic of today but just just in case it's nice to know about uh, by the way on the on that link that i actually added to the resource section the link essay you can find uh, like the things that I'm describing today is like the four parts of that essay. This is uh, that essay is fantastic. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, make sure to uh, read that one. So after the symbol table and resolving all the symbols, uh, the linker will con con kind of conca uh, concatenate all the contents together from all the object files, sort them by type, and apply all the relocations on them. And finally, we have, when we had all the symbols figured out, uh, when we had all the relocations applied to the contents, we not be the linker will actually write the result into an executable file. <coughs> Sorry. Depends, uh, of course, the format depends on the OS and the platform. In Linux, it would be like an ELF format, L format. Um, so. The thing that uh, I described is kind of like an AOT ahead of time compile uh, ahead of time compilation. We have JIT as well. I talked about it uh, in previous episode. I ma always mentioned JIT, but I didn't say what it is. So JIT is just in time compilation. Um, for AOT, we read the source code, we go through the entire process, and we end up with a executable file ahead of time. But the JIT is kind of different. JIT, we give it something, we give it, give it the source code, it compiles that piece of source code on the fly in runtime. So if you're working on, as I mentioned earlier, if you're working on a static compiler, AOT is what you're uh, looking for. But have like being able to AO, AOT some piece of code doesn't mean that you don't need a JIT or having a JIT doesn't mean you can't do AOT. You actually can run the JIT on compile time to do something for you. And that's what we're going to do for the macro system. We, we have to run the JIT on compile time, run some functions, let the user have control over the compile time with macros, and finally AOT the result into an executable. But our approach when we're using a JIT is different than what I'm going to show you today. So with that in mind, and as I mentioned in almost every episode, since our mile, first milestone is, is to have a bare bone compiler, compiler uh, with like, like a basic, basic fun functionality that has all uh, the pieces in place, wired up and ready to go. The code that I'm going to show you today is going to go away like next episode. Like I, I'm just going to show you how we can actually 
uh, compiled to uh, object files and linked everything together but we're not going to use this piece of code so it's like a really uh, nasty piece of code it's really dirty but since it's just for demonstration and we're not going to use it it's okay so let's have a look at the code so I, I kind of uh, try to avoid showing you uh, the Serene C file just because almost all the things in this file is going to go away. As soon as we get the JIT done, we figure out the entire compiler uh, functionality. We're going to kind of delete this file and start over based on the Inter interface that we have uh, then. So um, basically, there's a function called uh, where is it? Yep, yeah. dump as object. The rest of this file is just like parsing the uh, command line and decide what to do when we want to dump an object or compile to the target code and have the executable file. We, we call this function. We pass it a namespace. If you remember from the previous episode, a namespace contains the AST and it has a function called compile to LLVM. So this function here generates a, 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 generates a module, a maybe module, that contains the LLVM IR representation of our AST. So, oops. So, um, we check for our maybe module uh, to see whether it contains a module or there's an error. If there was an error, we like print something and return. I didn't print anything here. And the minus one for status code is just useless. We can, since we're going to throw away this code, it's it's not important. Um, we move uh, we move the module into module. Uh, obviously, we have the context. Um, uh, this is like the serene context we we set the triple uh, target so if we look at this thing it's just on a string and we set it in the constructor of the uh, serene context and if you look at the uh, look at how we act like what is a, a triple so a triple is just on a string I'm pretty sure you saw it already in your uh, operating system but it's like CPU type vendor type and operating system it means like what platform are we comp like trying to generate code for right so going back we have the triple set in the module for the module then we create a target machine out of that triple right so it's like okay the target machine is an entity in llvm it's like llvm target we we use it to generate the uh, generate target code for that specific target. We we check it for errors. Then we set uh, like a CPU. What type of CPU we want to generate uh, generate for? What features do we support? Uh, right now, I I'm not using any special uh, specific um, feature, and we we use like a generic CPU. We have some options if if we want to pass any option to the pipeline we use uh, we use it like this also we have a, like a relocation model a target a pointer to the target machine when we create the target machine actually like this um oh yeah we uh use a, like a unique pointer for it and we set the data layout so so far we describe the machine that we want to generate the code for. It can be like a x86, it can be ARM, it can be whatever, what and different uh, operating systems. That ho uh, that's how we define it. And finally, we set the data layout. Data layout is like how do we want to lay out our like that's uh, that's really obvious. It's like for this specific platform, how should we lay out the data in memory, right? That's like kind of the format uh, we need to use for the memory. And finally, uh, we get the um, target file name that we want to uh, use as an output. Uh, this is not 
really special, right? We create, uh, we construct a path for the object file. We stored, uh, like we use a stream to write to the object file. And finally, if there wasn't any error or anything, uh, we use a path manager and the path to generate the object file. So as you can see, the target machine was our target platform. There's a function called add passes to emit file. This thing is actually creates the pipeline to generate uh, object file out of a uh, module. And quite a straightforward. And finally, we use that pass that we created here, right? This is like a pass manager and uh, uh, pipeline it creates a pipeline for us finally we run that pipeline on our module and flush the output file the most important thing here is since it's a, like a i can't say sudo code it's a, like a just a really simple demonstration of how we can create object files i use just one module but usually when we import other namespaces and stuff like that we have more objects we have to run the pipeline on each module to generate a, a specific object file for each module or namespace. And finally, by the end of this, uh, by here actually, when we get to here, we have our object files created. But if we want to actually compile the entire thing and finish the entire process, we need to link it, uh, link the object files together. There's like two approach to do that. I have the bo I have both of them here. I commented out one of them. The other one is I actually uh, wrote the code. So we have two options. The first one that I used here, I know it's nasty, it's hard coded. Bear with me. It's just for today's episode. I'm going to get rid of it. So it kind of doesn't make sense to uh, put any extra effort on it. So the first approach is to actually um, use the linker directly. Either you can spawn another process and call a linker, do your stuff there, or in uh, in LLVM the official linker is LLD. You can it has like a really nice interface. You can actually link statically against the LLD code and like bake the linker inside uh, your uh, compiler, like what I did here, which in my opinion is the best approach and link, uh, link the object files yourself. But you need to provide the arguments uh, that LLD needs. Since we're using it as a library here, uh, it supports the same argument as a command line LLD. I hard coded everything here, like the libraries uh, and object files I have to link against to generate the binary, where to look for the share object or uh, static objects, vice versa. And finally, I call the LLD for an elf format uh, uh, to link my object files. And I pass the object file like this, right? This is the object file and I say the output should be this file here. But obviously in, in your implementation, you have to kind of be more elegant. This is not something that you want to do in your code. You have to guess, uh, you have to find different uh, places that uh, like on the target platform, you can find the object files or shared libraries things like that. You have to kind of figure out what platform uh, you're uh, linking again uh, for uh, and things like that. It's uh, up to you to do that. Another appro approach is to use a C compiler, right? It's easier to do it. So the code that I have here, if I uncomment it actually. So what it does, let me do this. What it does is to use the Clang driver to call to Clang and 
ask Clang to deal with the linker. It's easier because you don't have to guess, like you have to do, uh, you don't have to do the setup I did for the LLD, like give it the different paths on the platform, uh, on the target platform to find the libraries and stuff like that. You, it's easier to uh, let Clang the, uh, or the target C compiler uh, do it. Um, but the downside is you're now, of course, depends on how you call the C compiler. I use the driver, you might call it like a, you might dile directly spawn a process and find like GCC or Clang or whatever, and then uh, do it that way. But in any cases, you're, you're kind of the your compiler needs another compiler. It kind of, your compiler depends on another compiler. It's not nice, right? If as a user, when I use a compiler, I, I just want it to work. I, I, I don't want to like have another compiler for, uh, so both of them can work together somehow. I like, it would be more complicated. And it, since you have to now link against the Clang driver and stuff like that, it's going to make your, uh, compiler size much much bigger but basically what you uh, what you have to do is to construct a driver uh, object that then you can call you can construct arguments like before like how we did with for uh, LLD and then create a compilation compilations are like jobs uh, build a um, create the job for that compilation and then finally execute the compilation check for the errors and you're done right it's it's easier because you don't have to figure out what uh, flags you need to use with the linker but at the same time you're dependent like you make dependency on other uh, compilers so in my understanding and Based, uh, based on stuff that I read and talked to people about it, the best thing to do, hands down, is to use uh, the linker, uh, to interact with the linker directly. And even better than that is to use the LLD library. Use LLD as a library. That's the best thing to do. It's not as big as uh, Clang driver and uh, it's easy to use, but you have to figure out some uh, technicalities for your uh, linker. I'm going to include both of uh, these approach in the uh, branch for episode 12. Uh, but again, since we're not going to use uh, this approach and we're going to use JIT to do all this, we're not going to use it. This entire file is going to go away when we actually finish the JIT. Um, so that's it for today, guys. Um, I have nothing more to add. Just uh, read the linker essay. It's fantastic. If you have any question, if you have any feedback, please reach out to me. If you like my work, Please subscribe to the channel and uh, leave a like. If you're interested in uh, contributing to Serene, reach out to me or join our mailing list. And have a fantastic day. See you on the next episode.